Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to another Crafty Decor Adventure, Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home. And in today's video, I am so excited to share with you guys 10 DIY Dolly Tree Spring Decor Crafts. That's right, I said spring. Listen, we're right in the middle of a winter snowstorm, but I am doing some spring dreaming. As you guys can tell from my last video, I'm starting to work on bringing out some of those bright, colorful, just beautiful ideas that we can incorporate into our home for spring. So if you guys love to craft and decorate on a budget, oh, don't miss my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. The details will be in the description box of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's totally free. If you punch the bell and click all, it will update you every single time I post a new video. Listen, it is a true blessing and honor to have you guys here. Thank you so, so much. I love to craft and decorate. And if you love that, let's get to it. Without further ado, go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafty. So excited to share with you all how to make this super awesome Dollar Tree tipsy pot. So you're going to grab a four Dollar Tree garden planters and I chose the larger one because I want to make a really large tipsy pot and I used an attachment on my screwdriver to drill the holes with. You could also use a hot glue gun the end of that and just heat it up. So the next thing you want to do is take a broom handle or any kind of long um, PVC pipe that you can add to the center of it. And this is just a Dollar Tree little broom handle and I'm adding a bag of the Dollar Tree potting soil to the base of this. The next thing I had an idea to do was to add um, numbers to the outside of this. Now you guys can use your house numbers and this is not my actual house number, but um, I thought it would be a fun idea to share with you guys this part of it if you wanted to do this. Now I'm using the Dollar Tree poster board um, stickers and I'm just gonna stick those on and then spray paint over those. I'm using the Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint and that is really a great spray paint. I've also heard that you can spray a layer of spray Mod Podge on first, then add your spray paint. So I have yet to try that, but I may try that because I did notice that it scratched off fairly easily, but you can also seal it with some Mod Podge or a acrylic sealer. Now I wasn't in love with how these letters looked, so I just ended up adding the poster board letters back on and then adding a layer of waterproof Mod Podge on top of that. Now for my tipsy pot part. So I just, I changed to the white Dollar Tree broom handle and I just shove that down inside of my pot and then you take your first pot, you tip it all the way to the side, then you take your second pot and you tip that to the other side. And I did add some rocks on top of my dirt because I don't want my tipsy pot blowing away. So here's how it looks so far. Now I didn't have foam to put inside of here and I wanted to add some fake flowers because I haven't really bought a whole lot of real flowers yet. We still have um, a little bit of frost that could happen. So I'm just holding off on doing any real plants yet. But I did add some of these Dollar Tree fake plants. They have some really nice fake greenery out this year and it's plastic, so it'll definitely be weatherproof. And so I just added some little pool noodle down in there and then I'm just um, placing my little greenery in there, just kind of scattering it about, making it look kind of wild and whimsical. And then I'm using some of the Dollar Tree Celsius grass and moss mixed together and just adding that to the top. And you can see I bent my broom handle over. It was a little bit too long. I thought I was going to, you know, cascade some ivy down on it, but I wasn't crazy about that. They're really flimsy, so they're pretty easy to bend in half. So here is how it's looking. Let me know what you guys think. This is the first time I have ever made a tip pot and I felt like it came out pretty good. I did have a little wobble with the back of one of them. I set it on the side of my little patio here and it flopped off and so it got a crack in it. So just be careful. These are not the most sturdy pots. You can definitely go to Walmart, you know, and get like a clay pot if you wanted to. But I thought for doing this on the cheap, it came out pretty fabulous. Um, I really encourage you guys to try one of these. It was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. I really thought it was going to be way harder. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are loving this one. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to make a super adorable lemon, you guessed it, plunger tree. So we're going to start out with a Dollar Tree plunger and hot glue the top of that plunger. Then I'm going to go in with this piece of greenery. Now, I did pick up this greenery from Michael's. I had it floating around in my craft stash. So I'm just going to hot glue it to the top of this. You can also pick up greenery at your local Dollar Tree. Now, these are some Dollar Tree 
lovely lemons and I just hot glued them to this piece of vine that I found at Dollar Tree. So Dollar Tree carries these pieces of greenery and you can just hot glue some lemons to the top of your vine. Um, and so I had created two of these actually last season and I had them in my craft stash. So I'm hot gluing both of these to the top of my plunger. Now you can also find lemons at your local craft store. So get creative. If you can't find them at Dollar Tree, check Walmart, check Hobby Lobby, or check Michaels. I know you guys can find some lemons. Um, you're gonna find your lemons at Dollar Tree in the craft section, same with Walmart, and same with Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Now I'm reinforcing this lemon tree with some zip ties. I ended up using um, one at the top here and that way that greenery was gonna hold on really well. And then I scooted just a little bit further down and reinforced it down at the bottom. The greenery was a little bit heavy as well as the lemons. So you don't want things sliding around. Um, so and I added just a little bit more hot glue here to the top. And then I added my trusty burlap and then wound that around the tree to give it a little bit more of a tree-like appearance. Now, I think that we've done a plunger tree for pretty much every season. We did one for fall, we did two for Christmas, we did one for Valentine's Day, and now we have to do a easy peasy lemon squeezy um, tree for our transitional kind of going into spring. And really, this is going to be more for like my kitchen. I love kind of transitioning into kind of some fresh lemon colors. I noticed that Target um, Magnolia line is putting out lemons right now. So we have to keep with the trends or really I don't keep with money trends, but now flip your little plunger inside out, plunge it directly into that Dollar Tree bucket and it's actually gonna stay perfectly, you guys. You do want to give it some weight though with a little bit of sand or rocks or you can pick up a, a bag of Dollar Tree um, gems which is what I had on hand pretty much use what you guys have on hand you could pop in rice anything that's going to give it some weight I know Mr. Romantic had a bit of a time with my fall tree he kept tipping it over he was like babe you've got to put some weight on these so ever since then I've really tried to put some weight down inside of them so then once I had that finished I kind of gave it a bit of a fluffing and added a little bit more lemons in and around so you can just kind of hot glue the ends of them and pop them in. They're just styrofoam so you can put a little bit of a slit into them and pop them into any branches. I'm using some Walmart bags to fill that in. This is what I had on hand you guys. I'm trying to craft my stash and then I'm popping some little burlap in here. I was running low on my moss. I've been using so much moss already and so then I just added that burlap in and then gathered the moss that I did have. <laughs> oh my goodness. Here is how it looks so far. I really did feel like though that it did need some greenery. So I'm adding a dipple dabble of hot glue and then popping some of that moss in. And then honestly, I thought this looked so adorable and so perfect. You guys are gonna see lemons are gonna be super duper hot. The Pantone colors for spring 2021 are gray and yellow. So I definitely know we're gonna see lemons. And this lemon tree I'm so crushing on. We did this on a total budget, you guys. So gather the items, your little plunger, your little Dollar Tree bucket, and some greenery and some faux lemons. Have fun with it. Get creative. I can't wait to see your post in our group page. And oh my. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to make a creative splatter screen lavender wreath. So we're going to take one of the Dollar Tree splatter screens. And at the base of this, I'm just going to add some hot glue. And then I'm going to add some of the Dollar Tree moss. And you're just going to kind of spread it out at the the base to kind of give it a little bit of coverage where that rim of a splatter screen is. So just add some hot glue and then add some moss.
Once I had all the moss added, I then used some nautical rope around the top part of my splatter screen to cover the handle. So I just hot glued at the base of my little handle and then wound the nautical rope up and hot glued as I was going along this process. So you kind of have to be a little bit patient and I did lose a little bit of moss along the way. That moss is tricky, you guys, and comment down below, spring in Dollar Tree moss. It's just a thing. I love it. It's just so green and fresh and fun, but boy, it sure does get everywhere. So definitely have a broom and a dustpan on hand, but wait till you see the final result. So results is going to be totally worth it. Now, the next thing I want to do is take about six to seven bundles of the Dollar Tree lavender. You could also find lavender at Walmart if you can't find it at Dollar Tree. You could also use lilacs or pretty much any floral you have on hand. I just added some hot glue and then I'm kind of pushing it up underneath the little handle where I have that little um, bit of nautical rope kind of twisted on there. So I'm kind of wanting to make like an upside down hanging wreath. So when you pick lavender, you would want to almost hang it upside down to let it dry out. And so that was my idea to make this like kind of French country Paris inspired wall hanging or lavender piece. Um, so I'm just layering in these bundles and I believe I ended up using about five to six bundles. Now the lavender is a bit flimsy from a Dollar Tree and some of it popped off, but that's okay with me. I ended up just kind of pressing it in and I did reinforce this with a zip tie. So um, just a little side note there, the zip ties have really been coming in handy for me lately. So pick up a pack of those if you guys happen to, and then just take some of those extra pieces of lavender or whatever you end up using this craft with and add those in. Now for the next part of this DIY, I decided to create a really beautiful kind of front Paris inspired striped bow. I'm whipping out my easy bow maker and I'm gonna make a five inch bow. So five inches on either side and you can find an easy bow maker on Deco Exchange at your local craft store. Michael's I believe carries them. You can use your um, coupon to get a great discount. You can also find one on Amazon. Pretty much anywhere will carry these. And so you just uh, pop it in there and it goes back and forth. It's super easy. You can also make an Olivia bow, just make a fun little bow and then tie that on to the top of your little um, doodly dad here. And then voila, you have an ultra fabulous kind of Paris French inspired wreath not a wreath really though, but kind of like a wreath, wall hanging I would say on a budget. And this is just a different take on a wreath. So I always love to come up with a creative idea that can inspire you guys um, to do something a little bit different. And I think it looks really pretty kind of off to the side of my faux fireplace. Um, and it mixes in very nicely. It looks crisp and fresh and very spring ready in my opinion. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to use eight of these little wooden squares and I want to create a little Dollar Tree kind of planter box. So I'm just using hot glue to glue my little cubes together and I did remove the little drawer part of the cube and I am going to save that for another project. And <laughs> so you could just kind of hot glue these together and you can always use wood glue, but just for speed purposes, I went ahead and used hot glue and it seemed to work fine. I don't know, comment and let me know if this is okay to do, but it was working for me, so I went for it. The next thing I wanted to do was glue all my little cubes together. So I'm just gluing them end to end, end to end, end to end. And that's gonna create one 
big planter box and I'm going to use this in my kitchen. I know exactly where I want to put it above my Hoosier cabinet. It's going to be so cute. Okay, so once everything is all glued together, you guys can customize this. So grab some chalk paint. I'm using white chalk paint. You can use acrylic paint. You can use stain, whatever decor style you're going for paint it and make it look like you guys want it to look and you guys can use this for anything you could um, use it for florals you could use it for dividing you could use it for craft storage so many little options I am going to make a pretty easy 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 little floral in it with some greenery and a couple of lemons popped in it's gonna be so easy and fun now here's a fun little hack you might want to try grab an inexpensive paper plate i found these paper plates at hobby lobby they were like five bucks and then 40 percent off that so they were super inexpensive super cute and we're going to use them for diys so i'm just cutting out the square that's going to fit the front of my little planter box here or a cute little box. I don't know really what would you guys would call it, but I just cut out squares that size and I'm going to decorate it with um, the little lemon plate, which I thought was a pretty fabulous little idea. I feel like I was a little disappointed that Hobby Lobby didn't have more lemon decor to choose from, but I was also excited in the same sense because I knew I could DIY some for my kitchen. Um, they did have cute stuff and I felt like the best deal was definitely the lemon plates and lemon napkins because I'm going to get a lot of bang for my buck on those. Now I'm taking a stem of greenery from Walmart and then this stem of like little white flowers from Walmart. I think they're three bucks and you get a lot on them and they look really nice. And so I detached all of the um, little stems off of there or the little end to ends and I'm just popping them directly into this little box. I didn't want to hot glue anything. I didn't have floral foam with this. So I just cut them short enough to where you could just kind of pop them right in. And hey, it worked perfectly. Once this goes up on a shelf, I don't think anybody's going to mess with it. So... I, I think it'll be fine. But if you guys were to put this somewhere that you needed some floral foam, definitely put floral foam down in there if you need your arrangement to stay a little bit better. But here's how it looks popped into my easy peasy lemon squeezy little summer spring decor idea. I was so excited for this. I feel like it's something that you would see, you know, at Hobby Lobby or TJ Maxx for definitely more than a couple of dollars here. So for the next DIY, we're gonna create a beautiful mantle display on my mantle here. And I'm gonna make a pretty little floral by using two pieces of greenery. So really just any, any greenery will do. And I did find this at Hobby Lobby and they have their greenery 50% off. So that made it a little bit more price friendly, but I am gonna give it a nice good fluffing here. And so I'm gonna add one greenery to one side and then one greenery to the other. And you can see Benji Bear is directing the scene. He's going to tell me where to put these flowers, how much fluffing to do, how many bows we need. Really, he likes to bark at the TV. <laughs> he loves watching TV and he really likes when he sees birds come on. So anyway, I'm going to take now and really dress this mantle up um, by adding in some pretty little flowers. So these are just flowers that I've kind of been collecting along the way that have some pretty spring colors. I got some of them at Dollar Tree, some of them at Walmart, and then a couple of them were from Michael's clearance section. I shared with you guys my after clearance um, finds at Michael's. They had pretty white and pink flowers. They had a little bit of glitter and frost on them, but they were Christmas flowers. So anyway, always check your after Christmas florals. You can get such a good deal on them. And a lot of times you'll be able to reuse them for the next season. So they had them on Christmas because they had frost, they frosted and sparkle on them. Here's one of those roses, but to me, they were gorgeous. So Anyway, I also added some Dollar Tree Wisteria to either side of my little mantle garland display here, and I'm just continuing to pop more flowers in. And again, these are just flowers that I've been kind of collecting that have some springtime colors to them. And there's that pretty Dollar Tree Wisteria. I was so excited and impressed with how that looked this year. So anyway, I'm popping the Wisteria in to kind of drape down the side and then just some pretty roses in. And there's that bird. Benji Bears goes crazy with the birds. He likes to sit in the window and watch the birds or watch them on TV. And so this is on my TV. It's just plain. Um, if you type into your YouTube search bar, just type in spring music and you'll have like a two to three hour loop of beautiful 
beautiful spring music and it'll have like pretty scenes that are for spring. I did that for Valentine's Day. I shared with you guys as well. Now I'm popping in some of those little Dollar Tree, like little yellow and pink little glitter balls that I had just, they come like in like a four or five pack on a stem. And I'm also popping in some of those pretty little checkered Hobby Lobby. These are kind of like an oversized larger um, egg and I'm just tying them on to my flowers. Now for the next DIY, I wanna share with you guys how to jazz up those Target Dollar Spot carrots. So I shared with you guys in my last video the Target has these little fabric carrots for a dollar, which I thought that was a great deal. I've made fabric carrots of my own, but these were already pre-made and so beautiful. I can just add them into the ones I already have, but I decided to make a beautiful bow using my Easy Bow Maker. And this is about a three inch bow on either side if you're using your Easy Bow Maker. And I added about three to four loops. So basically I'm just making a really big, beautiful bow to go on top of my carrot. So we're making a fabulous blooming carrot. <laughs> I'm gonna tie this bow off with a little pipe cleaner and then tie that on to my carrot, but I don't wanna see the pipe cleaner. So I ended up taking some Dollar Tree pink ribbon and tying that over the pipe cleaner. That also helped secure my big bow on top of that. You could also make an Olivia bow too, just for reference. That's my little bow that I share with you guys how to make that requires no tools. So sometimes I like to get lazy and use my easy bow maker. And then sometimes I like to make the Olivia bow. It just depends on how much work I've been doing and how tired my little hands are. So I'm giving my carrot a nice good fluffing and then don't forget to dovetail your ends on your ribbon and that's going to give you a nice little boutique finish. I think these are so beautiful and I think that they would be so fun to make using an even larger oversized carrot. But now I'm going in with some pink ribbon and this is just some Valentine's Day ribbon that I had left over. So really have fun with it. Get creative and use the ribbon that you might already have or use some pretty ribbon that you find out and about. I know that everybody's been kind of having a little bit of a hard time finding Easter ribbon this year. I found some of mine at Hobby Lobby and I also found some at Walmart. So just have fun with it and go for it and get creative. Make a pretty little bow for the top of your carrot and it just really jazzed it up. I was so excited for how pretty these came out. I'm gonna make some more for my dining room, but they are a little bit time consuming, but so fun in the end. I decided at the last minute to take some of this black and white check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and tie it onto my carrot. I just made a quick little shoelace bow and I doubled up my ribbon. So if you follow me, I like to tie like a little bow like you'd be tying a shoelace. And if you take and you double up the ribbon, that will help as well. And I will leave my bow video down below for you guys as well. So you give it a nice little good fluffing and to hang these, you can just take a satin ribbon and loop it through one of the tops of your larger ribbon. So that way your carrot will hang evenly down. I was trying to figure out in my mind how to make sure that my carrot like wasn't tilted backwards. So that's the best way to do it. Just loop it through one of the top loops of your bow and then I tied it directly on to my little mantle piece. And then again, I decided to add it into some of my other carrots. I really like the way that the black and white check looks popped in against the pastels. So I thought that was just like a fun little dimension, but you guys could just use any ribbon and whatever colors you love for your displays. Now 
for the next DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make an oversized bow for your mantle or your garlands or you know your wreaths or whatever so I'm gonna use my easy bow maker and I'm gonna start out with this black and white check ribbon and I'm going to go side to side in about an 8 inch loop and then you're gonna trim that first ribbon off the next layer I'm gonna use a polka dot pastel ribbon and I did get these ribbons from Hobby Lobby um, I did splurge a little bit on these ribbons because they are going to be like my main wow factor in this garland and so I wanted them to be a certain particular look and also a certain color and so I also love this little yellow ribbon so anyway you're going to go about eight inches and then I went seven inches on my pink ribbon and then on this black and white check ribbon I went six inches and then I just kind of made it a little bit smaller as I went along that way each layer could kind of show through and I love the easy bow maker because you can stack a really big bow without having to hold it in your hands but you can also make a really big beautiful Olivia bow if you guys have seen that as well so whatever floats your boat with these layered ones though I do like to use my easy bow maker so this is going to give me a lot of dimension and with my display and it's going to help me pull all of my colors together as well now I'm tying it off with a little pipe cleaner and I'm going to tie it on to the end of my mantle where the garland part is and then the next step is to give your bows a good fluffing so I like to buy ribbon that has wire in it and that way you can really fluff, fluff up your bows so the next thing I want to do is add some of my little grass to the front part of my little mantle here so Hobby Lobby has these squares of grass and they're $4.99 but all of their spring stuff is 40% off so you're going to automatically get 40% off of any Easter or spring goodies now the next thing I'm adding in is my little basket that I made two seasons back and I've shared that with you guys on another DIY video I'm adding in my bunny and then my cute little black and white check egg and then just some pretty florals and greenery around it now I do change this up just a little bit because I end up using that one of these baskets over in my dining room but here's another little nest that I made that's one of my chicken of the sea nests so you just take like a little tuna can or chicken of the sea can and you just add you know a bunch of greenery around it until you make it into the shape of a nest and then here's another one of my Dollar Tree DIY bunny baskets and you guys you can really make pretty baskets with moss and little Dollar Tree Easter baskets so I decided to take one of these Dollar General um, baskets and tilt it sideways and make it look like it's like a tilted sideways blooming basket it also is doing double duty and concealing um, our router that goes to our television back behind that one basket so I did need it to be kind of big there um, and then I just added another little um, basket I had this from last season from Dollar General and I tilted that one sideways as well these are different sizes but I think it's okay to kind of offset things just a little bit and make them different sizes so here is how it came out my entire mantle display I had my cute little gnome I popped in there and um, then my pretty little um, smaller gnome that we made using a Dollar Tree little Easter bunny I've seen so many of you guys make so many cute DIYs with that Easter bunny and a little basket I picked up from the thrift store my little Target um, dollar spot bunny pillow and then I just think it's blooming and ready for spring and Easter and so I hope you guys get so much inspiration off of this and just some happy feel-good vibes now let me know what I should do with my pink tree over there that was my trash to treasure project it was headed for the dumpster and I painted it pink my little ficus tree over there I decorated it up for Valentine's Day but I haven't figured out quite yet what I want to do for Easter and I did so many DIYs in this video I just wasn't able to get to it I created this really beautiful outdoor oversized planter Easter basket using a Dollar Tree laundry basket so the first step was to enlist the help of Mr. Romantic to haul this giant pot in I had it left over from last season during the summer and I had planted fresh flowers in it and I knew I wanted to park up the outside so he was pretty much wondering what I was up to with this so he moved it inside for me and I realized that the laundry basket was not going to sit down inside of the pot like I was hoping and so I had to 
I had to trim off the bottom of the basket. So you're going to cut off the entire bottom of the laundry basket and for reference the size of my gardening pot was about 18 inches across. So then I decided to also cut off the top row including the handle top part of the laundry basket. I knew I wanted to just dip that inside of there and then use the top handle to create my Easter basket handle. So just take your scissors and begin to trim off all those little pesky rungs in and around the top part of what is going to become your Easter basket handle. I decided to go ahead and cut this spot on the basket hoping that that would make these little tabs come off easier and it really did so definitely do that first if you're taking these tabs off and then I did cut off about nine inches of the handle so it would fit better down into my basket and now I'm just painting this white pot with some homemade chalk paint I use a cup of regular latex paint and half a cup of baking soda it's great homemade chalk paint to use use on craft projects. Now this planter probably will be under a covered porch area so I didn't worry about sealing it and also it doesn't bother me if my planters get a little chippy and worn. Now I'm just taking and I'm running a pipe cleaner through my handle and tying it on to that first row on my little bottom part of my laundry basket. And then I went ahead and set it down inside of the planter to do the second handle to really see um, how far down I needed to go with my handle. And it was holding on pretty well with just a pipe cleaner in the bottom part of the planter. But then I decided to go ahead and use one more pipe cleaner and just wrap that around the top layer or the top row of that plastic part of the basket. That way it made it just a little bit more secure. I didn't want my basket, Easter basket handle to be flopping over. So that worked perfectly. Again, you guys can size this to whatever planter that you have. I know Dollar Tree sells little planters. They're not quite this large, so you would definitely wanna make your basket handle shorter. But for an oversized outdoor planter, this really worked perfectly. And look how adorable this is, you guys. I am so excited. I've been wanting to make one of these oversized Easter baskets forever. And I was definitely feeling some spring vibes. I had this dirt left over from last season from some of my petunias. I went ahead and used real dirt because this is going to go outside. And I am hoping that once spring gets here and the temperatures are not getting down way below freezing I can put some real flowers and greenery in these pots but right now I just want to make something really cheerful for my front entryway I want to make it look really high end as if this was something you know that I bought at a floral florist shop so I think right now it's looking pretty cute I love the white on white very fresh and festive for spring So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to create some egg picks. I'm thinking I'm going to use these in my planter, so I'm just taking some of those sparkling Dollar Tree eggs. They're foam on the inside, so you can easily poke some shish kebab skewers into the bottom of them. And I did kind of go on the other side of where the little holes already were on them. And you could also reinforce these with some glue if you wanted them to stay. Now, I'm always changing things around, so I just pop them into the styrofoam. Now, over the weekend, my daughter and I went thrifting, and I picked up this greenery for $2.50. I was really excited to find this, so I poked that into the side part of my planter. Dollar Tree also carries some really nice greenery. And then I'm using that Dollar Tree Easter greeting sign. I just cut the top part off that had the little hanger on it and then I kind of settled it down into the center of the greenery that way it would stand up. I did end up going back in 
and putting the bottom part of the laundry basket underneath the Easter greeting sign and that kind of made it rise up above the dirt to where it wasn't sitting down inside the dirt. And now I'm adding in some of these sparkling Easter eggs. I just kind of played with this. I didn't want to cover up the Easter greeting sign so I moved the green one over to the side. Then I decided to fill the holes in the top part with these little tacks. These are some vintage tacks that I had out in the garage. The holes are fine to be on there, but I'm just thinking that that would kind of dress this top part of the sign up and make it look less like a sign that had the hanger cut off. So I'm just hot gluing the little vintage tack into the top part. You guys could also add a button. They sell buttons at Dollar Tree or just whatever little detail you want, or you could just leave it as is, or even add a bow to the top. And um, I thought this came out really adorable. And then I'm using some of that Dollar Tree Raffia, and I just tied a bow with it. And then I'm using some green ribbon to tie it onto the side of my basket. I really love adding bows, but because this is going to be outside and we are still getting a lot of wind and weather, I decided just to use this raffia. I think once spring begins to roll around and I find some really beautiful ribbon, I would like to add an even bigger and fluffier bow. But for right now, this is what I had on hand. And then I decided to go a little bit extra and add in this cute little Dollar Tree daisy and this little taller Dollar Tree white flower. I also had a couple of Dollar Tree lilacs. Now these were all left over from that Easter wreath that I did and I will have that linked down below if you guys want to check that out. I had a little bit more of that thrift store greenery so I'm adding that into the front part of the basket and I did go into the back part of the basket and add a little bit of the, dollar, er, of the thrift store greenery as well. I felt like that really filled it out and this greenery was fairly realistic. I think you can find greenery like this at Dollar Tree or it might be more cost effective to look for it at Hobby Lobby or Michaels and then use a coupon code where you can get like a little bundle. And so here it is on my front porch. If you can see right there, that's where I added in the bottom part of the little laundry basket just to get the Easter greeting sign to kind of set up. And you guys comment and let me know if you have any questions about this. But look at how adorable this is. Oh my goodness. And then remember those Dollar Tree eggs that have the little stakes in the bottom? I went ahead and added that to the back of the Easter greeting sign. I just pushed the stake into the dirt I added one facing out and then I added one facing the other direction so they're both kind of in there together. Next I'm going to make be making a pipe cleaner bunny. So first I am looping around the ear and then I'm twisting it so it's secure then I'm just going to repeat, repeat it and then once I'm done with that I'm going to loop it over the top and bring it back down. And then I'm going to make a little circle for the head. This one's going to be a little bit smaller than the body. And then we're going to loop the pipe cleaner through the circle two times so that it's back down at the bottom so we can make the body. So now I'm going to loop the the end of the pipe cleaner around back to the head and wrap it around the bottom of the head. Now we're going to make two little bows for the bunnies and so the first one I'm going to be hot gluing in between the ears and the head so it looks like it's got a cute little bow on top of its head. And the next bow I'm going to be gluing in between the head and the body. And so it's a cute little boy, yeah. And then I'm going to be sticking him into the by the cakes on this cute old stand by my mom. 
A huge thank you to my daughter for joining me in this crafting session today with helping me paint and also creating these adorable little bunnies to go in with my fake cakes. And speaking of fake cakes, if you guys want to find where I buy my fake cakes, I buy them from Rhonda's Rose Cottage Designs. She does the most amazing designs. Her prices are really reasonable. Her work is so detailed and perfect. I know you guys are going to love her. I, I, I want to share with you all how to make a super fabulous little garden gate on a budget. It. We're going to make a wall hanging and starting out with these two Dollar Tree garden gates, I'm going to turn one upside down and then take four zip ties and just zip tie the center pieces together. So I'm taking two zip ties in these center points and then two in the little lower center points. I'm going to take one of the little flower market signs. I actually found this at Dollar General last season and add that to the top and then a little flower bucket to the bottom part. You guys can really get creative and use what a little, whatever little sign you have on hand and whatever the little garden gate uh, buckets you have on hand. The next thing I wanted to do was paint this to kind of match more my decor. So I'm just using some white spray paint. This is just some white spray paint chalk paint that I had on hand. I actually don't care for this. I really like the white Rust-Oleum um, paint the best, but this is what I had, so this is what I'm going to use. So I gave it one good heavy coat. It did chip off just a little bit. So again, I really recommend the rust spray paint. Now I decided to give this bucket a bit of a gold, kind of burnished gold. I wasn't crazy about it, so I did go back in with a little bit brighter gold. Now again, this is a $1 market sign from Dollar General last season they may put it back out this season we'll have to see what dollar general puts out this season i am using some dollar tree gingham ribbon they are putting that out this year this black and white check ribbon so check your dollar tree for that and i'm just running it through the top part of this sign and then tying it off at the top you guys use any cute little dollar tree sign they are putting out so many fun and fabulous signs this one says flower market which i thought would be so perfect for this diy for these bows, I'm just tying a quick little shoelace bow in the top, which just means I'm tying a bow like you would tie your shoelace. I thought that would be so fun and fabulous and just really easy to do to kind of jazz it up, but not make it look too um, bowy, I guess is what you would say. So here's how that ended up turning out. And then for the bucket, I'm just gonna use um, a pair of sharp scissors or really you guys need to use like a craft tool. I did that off camera because it was a little bit dangerous how I poked into that tin, but be very careful. Poke two little holes into the back of your tin and then I'm just zip tying it to this um, little garden gate. And then I ended up doing my arrangement once I had it on the wall, but you can do your arrangement um, before you pop it onto here, whatever is easiest for you. Now I'm popping in two little styrofoam pieces into my little bucket here, and then I'm just adding in some hydrangeas. These were some hydrangeas that I got on 80% off clearance at Michael's, and they're gonna match in with my decor for what I have going on in this space so I chose some white and just some kind of pale coral colors and then I just felt like it looks so pretty and fabulous um, I also will probably end up changing it out maybe to some lime green as the seasons change and as we get more into Easter <laughs> For the next DIY, I want to share with you all how to build a bird's nest out of a cottage cheese container. So we go through a lot of these and I've had my eye on these to make a bird's nest out of. So I just cut the top off and now I'm hot gluing in and around the side and I want to wrap the entire container with this scrap of kind of burlap colored fabric that I have. And so I'm just gonna to continue to glue and wrap the fabric around the entire container. And now I'm just cutting off the excess part of the fabric. I did decide also that I wanted to go ahead and put the brown fabric in and around the base. And so I'm just hot gluing to make sure it's not too flappy in and around the bottom part of the container. And then I did go ahead and take another strip of the fabric and hot glue some to the bottom. And then I just trimmed the excess off of that. I really love the shape of this container. I guess it's spring and I just keep thinking bird's nest. So 
Anyway, I hope you guys are loving this. I'm just going around the edge and then I'm using up the rest of that Excelsior grass. I'm really happy to reuse the rest of this up because it's been floating around in my craft stash and it just gets everywhere. <laughs> so I'm so excited to make another cute little bird's nest here. This is also kind of similar to the one that we made out of the chicken can, but I'm just going around with some more of that old dead twigs and on this one I did go in with a piece of twine scrap that I had left over from another project and tie the edge of this on. So this made a, diff a little bit of a different shape of a bird's nest from the last one. The last one was kind of a little bit flatter and wider but I really like how unique they all look and how different they all look by using different sizes. To me, it looks a little bit more realistic. So now I'm just adding in my lovebirds and you guys saw me use these in one of my last DIY nests. There they are. Those are also from the Dollar Tree. They were actually from Christmas and they had sparkly heads. I just painted them with a tiny bit of craft paint. You guys can definitely do that. I know a lot of you um, had wondered if that was possible and so yes definitely you can add a little bit of paint to your birds um, to cover up any spots that you don't care for. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY we're just going to take some of that fruit. I had some from the Dollar Tree and I also had some that came in that little basket that I got at the thrift store. So I'm just taking it and I'm painting the fruit with some white chalk paint. I also did a DIY on this similar during Christmas where I added glitter to the fruit and a little bit of gold paint. So that's just another idea once the holidays kind of come. If you all need some fruit pieces to add into some of your florals or whatnot and you wanted them to be a little bit more of a muted tone. I think I did even go ahead and add a tiny bit of gray paint to the outside of this but I definitely didn't want the fruit to be gray. So here it is. I added an apple into the basket. I added that lemon. I might go Thank back you all so much for joining me. I have another fun and fabulous crafty decor inventor. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Co. And I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. Um, I encourage you guys to meet yourselves wherever you're at. And that means give yourself some grace. Everybody is on their own journey, crafting and decorating and in life in general. So keep putting one foot in front of the other and give yourself grace. Give those that you love grace and just always, always do your best and be kind. Be kind online, especially. Everybody's kind of stuck in home right now. So I know a lot of us are online a little bit more than usual. So a way that you can bless others and use your voice for good is to make a kind comment on somebody's post, heart their post, drop, drop kind comments in this comment section. And if you see somebody that needs prayer, pray for them. So that's a way that we can put positive light and um, energy out into this universe. And so I just want to encourage you guys to do that because I feel like um, this little world just needs so much of that. And um, if you have to take a break from that news too, as well, I definitely do that and stay in my creative um energy and vibe and you know just what God's blessed me to do so thank you guys for being here I'm gonna hug all of your hearts so so tight I love y'all thank you so much without you guys I wouldn't be here so keep watching these videos binge watch some of them I have some great playlists of organizing crafting decorating and all of that fun stuff and you can find links in the description box of this video or you guys can pop back and just cruise through my YouTube channel so thank you guys again I'll let you guys get back to your weekend and have the most beautiful gorgeous blessed day and until our next video because Kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. We'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. And it shows if I'm honest.